Hi, my name's Becky Geeson and I'm the programme leader for the undergraduate training route here at Bishop Grostes University, which we call the primary education degree with recommendation for QTS. So a huge welcome today. I'm sure you've already looked into what this course involves, but we're going to have a little talk now about the course itself before you get on with your interview day. So you can see the plan of how things are going to work during the day today. Um, first of all, we'll make sure that you're all sorted and settled on Teams um, and there'll be a chat open all day so that you can talk to us if you need to, if any, any struggles with anything to make sure that you know where you are and, and how you're doing things. So please, please don't panic. We know that today as well, a key thing will be that we're having to rely on technology because we're unfortunately not able to sort of do these on campus, um, these interviews on campus at the moment. We also know from lots of experience that sometimes technology doesn't really do what you hope it's going to do. So we do understand that entirely. And if you've got any technical issues at all today, please, the first thing is don't panic. We're not going to make this, you know, technological issues be the reason we can't offer you a place. So whatever happens, if your Internet dips out or you can't work the sound or, or whatever, don't panic. We will sort it for you. In the worst case scenario, if you really can't access what's going on today, what we'll do is we'll, start, we'll sort of move you out of today, give you a chance to have another um, go on an interview day. Um, so you'll have another opportunity instead. But if it's just a little break, we can talk about that later and make sure that you um, aren't behind, you haven't missed out on anything. So don't panic. Don't get stressed about it. It does happen and we all know about it. So we're not going to let that affect your interview today, do, day to day. And as I say, the admissions team are always there today on the chat. So we'll be able to sort of, you know, answer your questions straight off um, and support you all the way through it. So we're in at the moment. You are here in this pre-recorded talk on Teams um, where you're going to listen to me for a little bit. So I do apologise. Um, and then after that, either me, Hannah, um, Tracy, Kevin or Ruth, um, different members of staff on our teams, they will be around on the open chat room to answer questions um, that you might have. So we'd love to see your faces then. Turn your screens on, let us know your questions and we'll try and answer those for you um, and, and give you a chance to sort of get to know some, some real people and faces at that point. We'll also make sure that there's a little bit of time here around 11 so that you're all happy with Socrative. Now, this is the approach that you're going to use to um, get your maths task done and your English task will be also completed during the next chunk of time. So we're going to make sure that you know what you're doing with that. Now, these maths and English tasks are important, but they're not going to be make or break. So please don't panic about them. What we do with the maths and English tasks is that we use these to help us decide what sort of things we need to put into the programme for next year to support you through the course. So if, for example, you find that in maths you're not great at percentages and we see that people are not great on percentages, then we're going to give you some input to support you with that. Same on English. If you are rubbish with apostrophes, no big deal. It just gives us the um, the idea in advance that this is the sort of thing that we're going to be looking at during the year. Those are obviously very simple examples. So the English task, nothing huge to worry about. You've just got a piece of writing to do. Um, we're going to look at the content, but we're also going to look at the um, sort of written skills of that task as well. In the maths task, please lower your expectations. It's a 15 question multi choice maths test taken from the old SATs tests at year six. So they aren't stunningly hard. Some people don't get 15, I would say, um, and we won't give you your individual scores. I suppose if somebody got naught on the maths and naught on the English, we perhaps would have a little bit of a worry about things. But generally, it's about us finding how we're going to support you when you're on the course and just picking up on your different strengths and weaknesses at the moment. So take your time with them, do your best with them but don't let them panic you. OK, so then you're going to get those all sent back. Well, the English sent back to us and the maths will sort of be registered with us. And you've got a little time for a break there for lunch to gather your thoughts and prepare for the afternoon. In the afternoon, you will be interviewed in either the round at one o'clock or at three o'clock. So what we will do is be splitting you into usually one staff member, but sometimes two. 
and on Teams you will already have had contact from your um, your interviewer and they will have talked to you about what time they're seeing you and hopefully set up a Teams interview with you for that particular time. Again, if, if this hasn't come through to you, you haven't noticed this, just double check your um, spam box, inbox and that sort of thing and just make sure you're there with that or contact our admissions team. We'll make sure that we've got that sorted and find out where you should, well, how you should be engaging in the afternoon. So it'll be you and three other people probably at the most um, and you're doing a little group interview. Now, usually we do these group interviews on campus and uh, find that it's a really, really useful way that we get to know how you engage with other people. This is a really important skill to do with teaching. So it's important that we do our interviews in this way so that we can see how you interact with other people. Now, obviously, we're in a tricky situation this year that we're having to use Teams instead of face to face interviews at the moment. So it does make it a little bit harder. But again, please do your best. We have been very used to working with people in groups on Teams, so we understand the challenges of this. Um, make sure you use things like the hands up facility, um, listen to people and you know, think about your, your inputs in there so that you're having enough time to input, but also giving other people a chance to speak as well. So group interview, do do that interaction with other people. That's the key thing, really, because we're, we're looking for that and we will be sort of using that as part of our criteria to decide if we can offer you a place. Now, if during that interview, let's say in the first um, or sorry, in the last minute or two, your, in your Internet drops out or something. Now, if we find that we think we've only missed one or two few minutes or little talking points that we think, oh, gosh, we must get back to them and find out about that, we'll phone you between two and three o'clock if you're in the first round of interviews or four and five o'clock if you're in the second round. So the interview staff will get in touch with you. Now, the alternative is, let's say in the first minute or two, your Internet drops out and we can't get you back in and involved. We do have to carry on with the interview for the other applicants. But what we'll do, as I said earlier, is make sure that we offer you a different day so that you can come back and have another attempt at the interview once we've got things sorted. So please don't panic. OK, so that's about all on the interview day itself. Um, and we will move on. OK, why would you choose BGU? Well, I'm a bit biased. I love the place. I actually did do my teacher training here many years ago and then decided to come back to teach here um, on, the, on the academic team um, after I'd been out as a primary school teacher for 11 years or so. So I'm, I'm biased. I love the place. It's brilliant. Um, we have been training teachers for many, many years. As I say, I, I'm one of those, not right at the beginning of the 150 years, but somewhere in that, the midst of time there. We know that we're excellent at teaching. We've been recently awarded the TEF Gold, which means um, that other people recognise that excellence in teaching and learning as well. Um, we've got outstanding employability rates so across the university, but particularly in the teaching courses, our students do go on to get jobs. Very high percentages there. Um, every year with that. So you've got a very good chance of coming out with a job at the end of it. And the supportive campus community is something that we're so proud of. We've got a very, very good pastoral support um, there. We know that people choose us because we are a small supportive university and we're absolutely proud of that and very keen to make sure that that continues. So we're going to be there for you all the way through your degree. So why would you train to teach specifically at BG? We've got lots of wonderful courses at the university, but I'm obviously here um, talking about teaching today and you, you've applied for one of our teaching courses. So um, really, really important here to think about why teaching particularly here. Well, as I said earlier, we have got a um, you know big history of training great teachers. So we know we're very good at this. We're also very good at keeping up with the times and making sure that we're moving on in the field of teach it, teaching and education. So we know that we're up to speed, um, up to date with things and, and putting forward cutting cutting edge research in the area. We've got excellent outcomes. So usually our trainees or our students have outcomes around 97 percent in the good or outstanding levels. I haven't put it on this slide here, which I should have done, and I will correct that. Um, we've also got excellent outcomes in terms of the degree as well. So nearly all of our students on the primary education route end up with a 2-1 or a first class degree at the end of the course as well. So I think last year we were up in the, I think it was 94% of the trainee, uh, the students ended up with um, a first class or a 2-1 degree there. 
Employability, as we said, but is, is always well above 93%, sometimes up to 100% on various teaching courses. So we know we've got brilliant outcomes for our, our students. Ofsted came to see us back in January 2016, and we're expecting them again at some point, somehow, soon. They said that we were good then, and we know we've done a huge amount of work since then to make things even better. So I'm very confident that we'll be aiming for an outstanding um, the next time that they appear to, to visit us. One of the things they picked up on last time, though, was the, um, the outstanding levels of pastoral support. And they wished that they could kind of give us an extra badge for that because they saw that we did far better than other universities um, in that area. So it's important to make sure that we've got this sort of um, understanding of what this degree involves here. It's basically two things at once. It's the primary education, the BA Honours degree. That side of it is one thing. That's the academic side. And then we've also got the professional side. So this is the bit where you get the qualified teacher status or the QTS. Now, you will see when you look at some universities or some degree titles like this, it will say with recommendation for QTS. Um, or with QTS, it means exactly the same thing. What every university does at the end of the training is get in touch with the DFE and say to them, this person, we do recommend them for, teacher, uh, for QTS. Um, and they say yes, because they know that what we're doing is quality assured and rigorous. So um, that's what it means in terms of recommendation or with. So don't, don't be swayed by different universities that say one thing or the other. It does actually mean the same thing. So while you're doing the academic side of the degree, all the modules to get that degree, you'll also be very busily getting on with the qualified teacher status. You need to do placements and meet standards um, to assure that you've got those professional standards ready for that qualification at the end of it as well. Now you could, people often ask what age phase and why some courses again in different universities have an age phase attached to them. We prefer to um, say basically it's a, it's a teacher, it's a primary education course with QTS um, that covers all age phases, so from three to 11. Um, and then it gives you time during year one to make the decision a little bit more carefully about whether you want to work with three to seven, five to nine or seven to 11 aged children. It's very soon to make that decision when you're sort of applying for the course. So we give you chance to sort of get to know things a little bit before you make that decision. And the thing is, once you've made that decision anyway, it only really kind of applies for the next two years. So, for example, if you picked the three to seven, so the, the smallest, uh, the youngest age group of children for your training over year two and year three, that would mean that you did your training within that age phase, within the three to seven. So your placements will be based in nurseries, key stage one, early years. However, once you're qualified, QTS is QTS. It isn't assigned to an age phase. So you could apply for a job in a year three class or a year four class. You could even apply for a job in a secondary school as well. Now, most schools prefer you to have trained in the age phase that you probably start teaching in. So if you did a primary education degree, a secondary school might not want to employ you. Um, but your QTS does actually stand in a secondary school as well. So don't panic too much about that choice between your age phases. There's always time to, to change your mind about things during the first year. And then we'll make sure that you, we get that training for you sorted in the age phase that you're most keen on at that time. And after that, you might choose to go on to, to change age phase once you have been in teaching for a few years. So placements are a really, really important um, side to the primary education degree. Um, and it's something that people you know, choose the degree for because they want to be doing the practical um, side of getting in there and doing the teaching. We make sure that everything that you do is really closely linked. So while you're in placements, you're learning things that you then write about in your assignments. And the other way around, while you're doing your assignments, um, you're reflecting on the placement experiences you have too. So we make it very, very closely linked. So nothing seems like it's something um, different and extra to do on top of things. In the first year, we try to get you one to um, initially sort of three weeks of experience very early on in the in the course. Now, it's not you're not going to be expected to teach in this time. You're going to be expected to learn from the experiences in school and then reflect on them back in um, campus based sessions. Later on in the year, you'll have a five week introductory school placement, as we call it. And that one will be probably paired. So you'll have somebody else on the cohort that's that's in the school with you or in the class with you. And you will be doing some of the teaching during that time and sort of sharing things out between you. So very well supported 
um, and certainly not, here you go, here's a class, we're leaving you to it. So year one is all about building up your experience and developing you so that you're prepared and ready for year two. Once you get into year two, we have two weeks of sort of experience um, type placements spread across the year. Sometimes we do those in November, sometimes we do them a bit later in the year, depending on, on various things. Um, and then also you have six or seven weeks of school placement as well. Now, I've underlined this one and put them in bold because this is one where you'll really start to be assessed towards the teacher's standards. So you'll be on your own in this placement, but only as far as you're expected to teach 80% of the um, sort of school timetable. You'll have a school based mentor or a teacher, um, the, the class teacher often um, in the class with you some of the time or they may choose that actually you're doing fine. I'll, I'll leave you to it for a little bit. And that's carefully negotiated when you're ready. So again, you're not going to be left to it unless you are ready um, and you'll be supported all the way. You'll also have in that six or seven week placement um, a university based mentor supporting you. So two specific mentors that are assigned to help you through the placement and make sure that you're on track and that you get the best out of it. In the third year, again, we've got a seven or eight week um, placement early on in the um, in the year. So our trainees are um, during September to or sorry, October to December are out on placement doing their sort of final um, extending placement. And this is the one where they'll get their final sort of grade up to do with QTS. Um, but also we'll make sure that they have a transitional placement sometimes of well, it's two to three weeks, depending on the timetable um, of transitional placement later on in the year. Um, and that's where a lot of our trainees decide to um, by this point, they've actually got jobs arranged in schools. So they go and spend their transitional placement time in the school that they're going to be teaching in from the September once they finish their degree. So really great transition from training right through from year one, where you're building up your experience into year two, where you start to be assessed and then into year three and onwards and beyond into your NQT year. Um, the national requirements are that there are at least 120 days of school placement across the three years, but we actually go a little bit higher than that because we think this is um, a particularly great learning opportunity to you, for you. Um, so at the moment, I think we've got around 134 days of school placement um, to make sure that you really get to, to learn as best as possible on the job. We're often asked um, how placements are organised by people coming to um, look at our, our degree course. Um, and we've got an absolutely fantastic placement services office that do basically everything for you. So you don't need to worry about that at all. You don't need to find schools. You don't need to work out how you're going to get to places. We will do all of that organisation for you. We'll make sure that you're in the right age phase for that training that you've, as we've talked about before, which age phase you've chosen. And we'll also make sure that physically you can get to the school that you're going to. So maybe you're driving um, and sharing a car with someone else and it could be that you're on public transport, but we'll make sure that it is practically possible for you to get to the school. And as I've said before, you've got people there in school supporting you. And we've got a really wide range of schools in our placement area. Um, I think probably we have some placements sometimes in South Yorkshire. We go down to Norfolk, um, across to Leicester, Nottingham. So all over the place, a really big partnership area. Now, if you think that maybe during your placements, you might want to be based at home. So let's say you come and live on campus um, during most of the year, but you think maybe you would you'd like to be placed at home, say, um, let's say you live in Boston, for example, it could be that we can actually find your placement closer to Boston for your for your placement time. So that's something that we can we can talk to you about once you're on the course and you can give us two addresses that you want to be placed from um, maybe your Lincoln address and your Boston address, let's say. So if your home address is somewhere within that big placement area that we've got, it could be that we can consider that for you. We can't, though, go much further than that. So let's say your home is Cornwall. I'm afraid we're not going to be able to manage that. And the reason for that is our university based mentors wouldn't be able to get down there to um, to work with you and support you properly. And we would need to, um, you know, it would be a school that we haven't worked with in wasn't in our partnership. Um, and we would need to make sure that we were quality assuring that to make it the right sort of placement for our trainees. So if you're in the partnership area, it could be something that you might like to consider. People also often ask about how the, the course is organised um, 
and very much we work on blocks. So when you're not on placement, you have BG sort of academic, BGU based academic sessions and independent study time. Now we can't do one module, then another module, then another module. And I'll talk to you about the modules shortly as well. Um, so you will be doing perhaps two or three modules at the same time as you build up towards, um, towards placement times. So busy, um, usually in year one, we've got three or four days worth of, of taught time. Um, we try and group people in groups of about 30. Sometimes you'll be in bigger groups. Um, if we get back on or when we get back onto campus, um, there could be some bigger lectures, for example, where all of you are together. But generally, we prefer to start people off in groups of 30 or so so that you get to know other people on the course. Um, but as I say, it will be a sort of busy week for you with most weeks involving three or four days at least taught time, perhaps a little less in year two and three on campus, although year two is particularly busy at one point before they go out on placement as well, um, because there will be more independent study time and perhaps bigger lectures. So you're just coming in for shorter periods of time to have, have things all at once and then off to do your own learning as well. Our personal support, um, our personal tutors are brilliant. They'll be with you from day one all the way through, hopefully. Um, so you'll be make, meet your personal tutor on the very first day of the course um, and they're there for you right until they're writing your reference and well on beyond. So often our trainees um, get back in touch with us after they finish their degree um, and tell us where they're up to and ask our advice and that sort of thing, which is lovely. So um, they become our, our person um, all the way through and beyond. So as I said, um, these are the modules or how it works. Basically, within each year group, you have um, five or six modules that you're working on. One talks about the core subject, so learning about the subject itself of maths, English and science, but also about how to teach it too and the sort of theories behind how to teach those subjects well in school. Same for foundation subjects. In the, the, also, what we're doing here is building up. So in the first year, all of these things are introduced um, as a starting um, you know, starting off knowledge. And then the second and third year, they, you build on that knowledge, um, sort of the same teams running those modules all the way through. And then the third year, you sort of become experts in the particular areas that we're looking at and really sort of be ready for that teaching that you're going to be doing the next year once you're out in schools as NQTs. Our research module is really great in the way, particularly in the way that it uh, builds on research, because in the first year, you're learning from research. In the second year, you're engaging in research in a little group with a tutor helping you all the way through it. Um, and then in the third year, you, you do your independent research project, which is kind of like your dissertation for the degree. Um, another one that's really great is the, is the, uh, the critical thinking strand, which really has developed our trainees, our students thinking greatly during this um, the, the few years that we've been running it. So it really gets you to think about different perspectives on things and develop your um, educational philosophy. Professional skills, it runs in the first and second year, not the third year, because the research module becomes a sort of double weighted module. But the professional skills one, we start off looking at um, behaviour management in the first year and then special educational needs in the second year, because those are two areas that people are really interested in behaviour. They're sometimes a little bit nervous about that before they go into school. So we do that nice and early um, and special needs. As I say, lots of people are really interested in that particular aspect of primary teaching. So you'll be learning about those things and developing them over the time that you're on the course. We have a fantastic range of assessments on the programme. Um, sadly, at the moment, we aren't able to do our face to face presentations, our group and individual presentations actually face to face, but we've done a great um, sort of alternative for our trainees who do instead sort of narrated PowerPoints and presentations, filmed presentations online instead. So that means that their safety is um, ensured, but also they get to still produce really great pieces of work that we look forward to marking. So the weighting is still very much the same as even in normal times. Um, about half of the, the assessments are kind of written and about half are a, a lot more practical um, and involve things like, as I say, the online um, presentations or the assessed blog that we've got as well, um, multimedia presentations, things like that. So we try and make sure it's a nice even balance because some people do really well with essay writing. Other people do much well with the sort of presentation practical side of things. And obviously that's really useful when you're going into teaching where you will need to be able to sort of do things face to face. So. 
back to the important bit then what are we looking for today now the most important thing is at the top of the list there it's the potential to teach we absolutely will not be expecting you to show us that you can do this already that's our job over the next three years so so long as we can see potential and we're really great at spotting potential i would say um, we can see when we can see a real teacher sitting in front of us so um, we've all been teachers we all know what we're looking for we've all worked with teachers for many many years um, so we know what we're looking for but you've got to show us it um, so show us that passion for working with children you've got to show that you actually want to do this and care about this um, because that's really key for being a teacher you may have had chance to work with some children um, you might have uh, run a brownie club or done a bit of school experience or even had chance to go into some schools and i know that's been particularly hard this year and absolutely you won't be marked down if you haven't had that opportunity you may have babysat for people you may have played with nieces and nephews or cousins or whatever um, who are younger than you you've got something that's made you want to work with children and analysis and reflection on that um, is really important so little things that you thought oh I didn't know children behaved like that or I'm interested how they learnt about that. That sort of reflection is really, really important if you can bring that into any of the discussions this afternoon. Communication skills, as I say, it's about how you talk to people, how you listen to people. It's that ability to work with other people and also to be resilient. You know, if you if you're finding that you're um, not able to get your words in this afternoon, you need to find a way around that. Um, so, you know, for, it's, it's that ability to sort of problem solve on, on the go and respond to what's going on around you. We're also looking at these English and math skills, you know, the tests, the, the tasks that I talked about earlier on. But as I kept saying back then, it's not going to be make or break with those tasks. That's more about how we're going to support you when you're on the course itself. But please do try your best with them. And then we get to see the real you and see that, as I say, potential to teach. OK, so this is the last slide. As you can see, you are here uh, or you're here next. So the next thing that you will do is get to chat to one of the team um, who will be there to answer questions. It might be me. So you might have to hear my voice again um, or it might be one of the other team members um, who are there to talk to you and answer your questions this afternoon as well. When you're talking to your interviewer as well, if you've got questions, then please do say um, it is a sort of two way process here. We're thinking about you choosing us as well as us deciding if we can offer you a place too. So please do find out so that you're well informed and you can make your decision about which university you're picking based on all the information. So open chat room, plenty of time to talk. And as I say, there'll be a chat room available for you to type questions in during the day if you've got any issues as well. The admissions team will then make sure that you're all set for the maths and English tasks, have a bit of lunch, and then in the afternoon you'll be doing your interview rounds as well. We're hoping to be able to let you know in the next day or two whether we're able to offer you a place. So it does rely on making sure we get the English tasks back from you um, and our tutors being able to, uh, our interviewers being able to get everything ticked off and all the forms filled in, which they usually do on the day, but we'll try our very best to let you know in the next day or two. Okay, so very good luck. Do let us know if you've got any questions um, and have a great time this afternoon. Make it enjoyable. Um, as well as showing us your potential.